Alright, for today's project we have the 928 lifted up again. So apparently one of the things that should be checked off to the knees is the clamps on the drive shaft and the torque tube. And according to the wise people of Renlist, you should check it every year. I guess the main thing is just loosen up the uh, clamp bolt, see if it moves out, and um, then you go ahead and tighten it back up to spec. And so from the sound of it, the reason these drive shafts like to um, move in those clamps is, I guess, you know, you figure it's a piece of metal and it twists under load, and if the clamps aren't tight enough and it pulls itself in on the clamps, and then whenever, you know, it comes out of load, it expands back out, wind up putting excess force on the crankshaft and wipe out the thrust bearings and kill the motor. So we don't want that to happen. Here's the uh, cover on the <coughs> flywheel. Now, depending on if we're lucky or not, might be able to get those back two out without having to lower the exhaust. So, we'll see if we can't get them out. I don't know how long these bolts actually are, so we'll have to see. Okay, well that one back there was tight, but I did manage to get a wrench on it and stick another wrench on the over the end of that and crack it loose. Well, it's close, but there is just barely enough for him to get that out. So as long as that one comes out, I think we can do this without having to monkey with rusty exhaust bolts, which should hopefully make this go a lot easier. These bolts were frickin' tight, but all of them are off, so I'm just going to see if we can move it down and out. Alright, one flywheel cover off, which it's dirty, we'll have to clean it up some. And uh, one... Rusty looking drive shaft. One rusty looking flex plate that looks rather flexed in, to be honest. Yeah, I can see a bearing up there. But, uh, so we need to turn the engine around by hand until the uh, Allen screw. It's currently on top is pointing down. So with those looking like they're going to the splines, we got about 10.5 millimeters. Yeah, now we're at 7.6, so we'll call it 7.5, so we've moved about 3 millimeters. But uh, either way, that was big movement. So while we're under here, we're going to go ahead and check the end plane to crank to. We did have a lot of pressure on it, it seems like. I've zeroed it out, it's on zero right now, and this one's in thousandths of an inch. So let's get the pry bar and just put a little bit of pressure on the crank. Ow. Okay, so it moved to about six thousandths of an inch. And if some prior calculation is correct, that is 0 0.15 millimeters, which I do believe falls in the spec of 0.11 millimeter to 0.31 millimeter. So as long as I'm remembering those numbers right, hopefully this motor is actually in pretty good shape as far as the thrust bearing goes. Right, so we're into the back end of the car now, and the pinch bolt for the drive shaft clamp at this end is conveniently located right above this heat shielding for the exhaust here. So there's the torque converter and you can kind of see up there. But uh, it is not strictly accessible at this moment. So we're going to see if we can't get that heat shielding out of the way without having to drop the whole exhaust. But hopefully that should get us access to the pinch bolt. So apparently the answer is yes, you can manage to get the heat shields out of the way enough to inspect that. Uh, the bolt is facing dead straight up, so you need to go spin the engine <coughs> over 180 degrees again. Well, we got it visible down here now. Anyway, so we'll wind that one out, clean it off, put some thread locker on it, and put it back in. 
And now we're back up front. You can see it's out there. It's a bit thick up there, but we'll get that started back in. And we'll get our wrench. And we'll get it snugged up and get the torque wrench. Alright, so we got this bolt in and torqued back up. Didn't have a paint pen that worked, so I took a scribe and marked the <coughs> drive shaft there. So now we will go ahead and get the cover back on and start the car up and make sure everything seems good. Alright, well, let's start the car and see if we don't get any, or hopefully we don't get any awful noises. Nothing so far. 